Everybody's heard of the Rubik's Magic, as well as the Master Magic. These were WCA events for a long time, but they never held competitions for any higher order magics. So I recently saw a video by Alex Ozer on how to create a Super Master Magic. This is a magic with 16 tiles, as opposed to the 8 in a magic and the 12 in a Master Magic. But I decided that I might want to go another step further. I had some extra tiles laying around, as well as some extra strings, so I thought, why not make a bigger magic? That is, one with 20 tiles. I couldn't find any tutorials online of how to make any bigger magics than these, but I decided to go ahead and make my own. So I'll be building an Ultra Master Magic in this video, that is an Ultra Master Magic Type A, and along the way I'll be teaching you how I did it. Before we get started, you'll need to gather some materials. First of all, get a large space on a desk or on the floor to work on. Then get a paper clip as well as 20 to 40 magic strings. Get as many as you can, but uh, 20 will do. And you'll also need 40 front and back magic tiles. In his video, Alex gave tile sets for the Super Master Magic. So all I did was Photoshop those and uh, print them out as the first step to make my Ultra Master Magic. The link to these pictures will be in the, uh, in the description below the video. So there are four pages with different kinds of links and you'll need to print all four and one thing you need to check before you print i'm not sure how microsoft word or whatever your word uh, program is how it um, copes with different paper sizes so if you live in a different country than the united states or in fact everybody should probably check that in height this uh these images are all 8.25 inches that is 20.955 centimeters if it's not, then you're gonna to have to resize it to that size because it might scale it if you have a different paper size. So just be careful with that. And when you're ready, go ahead and cut out all the tiles. All right, so I've just cut around the edge of one thing, but I just wanted to leave a couple notes. First of all, um, you should try to cut as, as cleanly as possible. Just a couple little tiny edges, like that one right on the, on the end there. You see it's black. I'm pretty sure that's going to be pretty apparent in the end product, so I think you should really take your time to cut these, even though this is probably the most tedious part of the process. So um, be very careful when you're cutting. Um, it can, uh, a, a couple tiny errors can make this a real hassle, especially if some of the paper sticks out at the, uh, the tiles at the end. So also, I wanted to note, when you're actually cutting these apart, you should be very particular to keep them in the same order. Because if you lose the order and maybe get two similar looking tiles mixed up, it will not work in the end product. So just make sure you keep them all in the layout that I have them provided in. I'll show you how to move that layout into the final product later. 2,000 years later. Finally, okay, so I've cut up all the pieces and here they all are. So now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to actually put them next to each other in the right way. Now, so right, so I'm just gonna put all these ones over here. here. Okay, so as soon as you're ready, go ahead and uh, take the section of gray tiles that has an ending on it, and then grab the two tiles that come from opposite sides of a black piece. So like these two right here. And you're going to extend those onto this chunk right here, just like that. And now we're going to take this section and we're gonna put it under. So we're gonna over and now we're just all these down, all these down to here. So close one on, and just place it all along, just like that. Okay, so now once these are all in a line, they can't really fit in the frame of the camera, but uh, here they all are. Um, you're going to attach these two onto the very bottom of this. So there they all are. Now go ahead and gather up all of your plastic tiles and take a whole bunch of them and just start sandwiching these tiles in between these. So. How you're gonna do that is just go ahead and take two tiles like this, make sure that the grooved side is on the outside so they're facing with the flat sides inwards, 
because the grooves need to hold the strings on the outside. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put the gray tile in between the two and close it up, just like that. So I'll be doing that with all of these. And whenever you're done, just sort of move them out of the way. Okay, so the only tiles I have left are ones with like old magic pieces peeled off. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this um, crappy little two by two magic that I made a long time ago and just get the tiles off of it because um, I'd rather have this than this. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this and grab the tiles. Next, we're just going to go ahead and sort out these black pieces. Okay, so I'll just move them into the camera view. Now, okay, um, so we'll just go ahead and take these that have the two missing next to each other and rotate them. And there should also be two pieces that don't fit on these. So like they, uh, they're they cut off of the paper on this, on this section. So now this bit here is going to connect first onto these two. We're gonna move this around. And then move this over. And then connect this onto that. So we need to turn it to get these two pieces to connect here and so on and so forth. And you'll start to see the pattern. Um, hope I didn't lose my position here. Okay, so that one goes there. And um, that one goes there. It's not too hard to reconstruct these, just make sure everything looks about right. Like there's nothing um, that looks a little bit out of line. Because if you mess up two of these, it can it can look really bad on the final product. You should be able to see the pattern. And if you don't, then you probably put something in the wrong way. So here they all are together. That's the solved state. Okay, so I really tried for a while to figure out an alternative to sort of figure out how to put the backside into this magic here. I was considering just sort of uh, fake doing the, the moves on the magic even when it wasn't strung together to try and um, get to the end so I could slip in the other pieces and then string it up. But I figured that would be too risky and too difficult. So what I went ahead and did is I just strung the whole thing together without the backside on. So I'm going to go ahead and solve it just like this without the backside. Um, and that way I can figure out what piece goes on what, uh, what tile. All right, so what I did was I went ahead and solved the magic, and then I put a little piece of tape on each part of the magic, um, and I wrote a number on it, one corresponding to each um, tile over in this section. So, uh, like, on this one I wrote one, two, three, four, five, etc., all the way down. So that way I can unsolve it, and then when I do that, I'll know exactly where to put which tile and what orientation to put it in. So... Uh, just to clarify, you guys don't need to do this. Don't string your magic and then solve it and then do all this because I'll just tell you where to put the uh, uh, where to put the black tiles when it's not in the solved state. So I'm just sort of keeping you guys updated as sort of a build video kind of sense. So don't do this, but this is this is how I got it done. Okay, so I've unsolved the puzzle and I flipped it over. So the, the blue side was on top originally, and I flipped it over left to right, and I took note of all of the different numbers, so and as well as their orientation. So now I can disassemble this, or unstring it rather, and then I'll know exactly what piece to put where and in what orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that, and I'll let you know when I'm done unstringing it. Having tried to explain this already a couple times to the camera, uh, has shown me that this is by far the hardest part of making this puzzle. This is about my sixth or seventh take right now, so um, 
uh, I just want to go slow and get this right because I don't want any of you guys to accidentally put in pieces wrong and then have to undo everything or not have a complete magic. So um, first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that that black piece is oriented the same way that mine is. So the uh, it should be facing so like the main point is pointing down this way. Now, what we do is we're going to take, uh, so this, the 10th, this piece is labeled 10, so we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this is piece number 10. Now we're gonna pick that up, keep its orientation. Now imagine it's pointing downwards, right? Or actually, sorry, imagine it's pointing down and to the right. So that's sort of its uh, downwards direction. Now you want to look at the downwards direction of the 10. So the 10 is pointing this way, and this one's pointing this way. So you want to turn this so they match up. So turn this piece like that, and then you put it under the 10. So that's how we figure out how where we put these in. So we basically just keep repeating that for all of the different pieces uh, until we have everything done. So now 11. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let this play for a couple of pieces just so you guys can get the hang of it because I don't want anybody to mess this up because that would be terrible in the end if you had to take it apart all over again. So uh, number eleven is the next one over. So that's oriented like this, and the number is pointing this way, but this piece is pointing this way, so we turn it like that to match them up. and put it under the tile. Okay, next is six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, it's pointing that way. Six is pointing this way. So we're gonna rotate it like that and put it under. There we go. Next, uh, this one says three. So we grab the piece three um, right here. And then we rotate it like that. Put it under. Four. So now is where it gets even harder. So. What goes on here is now we, uh, we've got some of the pieces missing. So just try and keep in mind the original shape of this. Uh, so there was one here, here, and then um, it filled in sort of like this. So you've got to keep track of which pieces you've already taken out. Four is right here. We're doing four. So four rotates like this. Now one. One is here, and it gets rotated like this. Next is two, so two gets rotated like that. Five. So now we are counting from here. One, two, three, four, five. This one is number five. Keeping track of orientation, we rotate it like that. Take off the top and put it under. There we go. And now we'll start to speed it up. So um, just if, if you need help, just pause the video and see exactly how I'm putting everything in where. And then at the end, you can probably just check and make sure our magics look, look roughly the, the same, just to make sure you haven't messed anything up. Actually, from now on, I'll start going in order of the tiles so I don't confuse myself. So next would be 12. That's the next tile. So, um, it's this one here. And it's like this. Just like that. 
Now similarly, there's 13, which is this one here, goes on this soil, and you start like that. Next is 14, this one here, and you can start here, like this. Next is 15, start here. This piece is rigid, like that. Next is this one right here, which is this one like this. Next is 17 right here, which is this one, this one like this. Next is 18, right here, which is right here, right here. And that's what it is, 19, right here, almost 20, 5,000. Okay, so here's number 19. And that one rotates like this. Next is 20, the last one, which goes like this. Now, check all your tiles and make sure they're all in the right place given my tiles right here. So I'll just move the camera and give you a look at all of these different tiles. Make sure it looks roughly the same as mine. Uh, well, make sure it looks exactly the same, but uh, you don't have to look too carefully. It'll probably be obvious if you made any big mistakes. So go ahead and check. All right. Okay, I've moved the camera so that you can see all the pieces now. So now what we can do is we can flip it back over. Obviously we can't just take the entire thing and flip it all back over at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna move these two pieces over a tiny bit. I know they're off the screen a little bit, but I don't have too much camera room, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're going to take these two and we're going to flip them horizontally like so. into the empty space that we created between the ending of this and now we can just flip these two over onto the other side again leaving some room and now we can take this last row here flip that one and you can probably see where I'm going with this we just keep flipping the next uncompleted row into the empty space in order to flip the entire thing lengthwise So now our Ultra Master Magic is pretty much assembled except for the strings. So the next part we have to do is just stringing it. So what we're going to do to string it is we're going to take all the pieces of the bottom layer and we're just going to move them out of the way. So I'm just going to put them above just out of the way so we have some room to string. We're going to start with the top left. Now you might already know how to string magics in which case just skip over this bit but I'm gonna go over it anyway. Okay, so what we do is we take the first three pieces, like this. So now, in order to string up these three pieces, first we'll move our camera, and next we grab a couple of strings, just two. So we're gonna start with these three strings, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep adding tiles and then adding more strings. So in order to string these three, take one string, and what we do is we sort of, the strings right here, so what we do is we just lasso it around the back end of this, right here. So we take it and loop it around there, around the back, and then we pull it. So that way it's sort of tight. So once you've done that, it should be in these two big grooves in the middle. Um, if I can get my hand on it. It should be in these two big grooves right there. So now, to attach it to the next piece, what we do is we hold it tight there. So now it's coming down in these two paths. Try and get my finger out of the way. 
Um, it is a bit hard to see. Let me adjust my lighting. Um, okay, so here are the strings coming out here. Now we need to uh, basically weave it under this little triangle here. So this string on this side is going to go down and under that, that corner piece. And then this string on this side is going to go under that corner piece and up over that piece. So take this string and put it under there. And I already rested this piece on top of the other string. So now this string is under that corner. Now we pull it this direction. And we essentially just mirror and repeat the same process to get it under the last one. So now we have the string here. We need to put it under that piece. And then we just tuck it under that corner in the top right there. I just tucked it under. So now whenever we pull, the string should be in all the middle grooves on the top of each panel. So it's, it goes, just to clarify, it goes behind that corner comes down these two grooves. This one goes under that corner notch and then back up around here. That is, it goes, sorry, under this corner notch right here, then over this one. And the other side goes under that corner notch and up into this top groove. And then it does the same sort of little flip flop. It goes down, th this piece goes down under that hole, then comes out up above here, then over in this direction, comes out here. And then the other one goes under that corner piece and comes around and above here. So um, just make sure all your uh, panels are in place inside the tiles so we don't leave any white space showing. And then when that's done, just go ahead and take the, uh, take the string, take your paper clip or pencil or whatever it may be, and then grab the string and put it under the corner, just like that. So now don't move these pieces. They're extremely flimsy. They're only connected by one string in one corner. So they will fall apart if you try and move them. But what we will do is we'll just flip the entire panel over carefully. And, oh, I probably should have removed these pieces of tape earlier, but I'll just do that now. So what we're gonna do now is repeat the exact same stringing process. So we're gonna go in the top left and sort of weave down and around, just from the back. Okay, so here I go. I'm taking the string. Oh, one other thing to note. Uh, you want to keep the metal bit in one of the big grooves. I'm not sure if it's an issue if it's in one of the, the tiny grooves, but you definitely don't want it hanging over the edge. Uh, that can really affect the, uh, the magic. Some people say it aff affects performance or something when you um, have it on one of the tiny grooves. I'm not sure about that, but that's what I've heard. So you might as well just stay safe and put it in the big ones. So now this on the back side, it should be a good bit easier, except I'm having issues with it. Um, so just do the same little tucking under maneuver, tuck it under this piece here, just like that. And now we're going to drag it up this way, tuck it under that corner there, and flip the other one around that corner, around the back. And then pull and use our paper clip to get it down under the corner. Just pull it under like that. So that's the first three. Now you can flip it over, just flip it over like that. 
And what you should do each time you string three panels is you should just do a quick mobility test. So in order to test if it's working or not, what you want to do is you want to take the last piece, flip it like that. Now it should be able to flip downwards. If it flips upwards, then that means you started on the wrong side. You might be doing a different stringing pattern if you already know how to string uh, magics. Uh, and then, and if it doesn't turn at all, then you've really messed up. So uh, just take it apart and try over. Um, then you should also test the second one. So fold it over two like that, and then it should turn up. So each time you string on more pieces, you should check the previous two. So just check one down and two up. And that should test your mobility and make sure you didn't make any errors while stringing. Okay, so now, um, for some of you, you're gonna need to put on one extra piece. Some of you are gonna need to put on two. Remember how at the beginning of the video I said, if you have, uh, you, you should have 40 strings, but if you only have 20, that can work. Um, if you have 40, what you need to do is a little bit different than what the people who have 20 need to do. So if you have 40, you're gonna take an extra string. I'll do a quick demo. I'm gonna take a string and string it from the bottom piece here on the second one. So you're adding one piece here and you put the string on the bottom and then string it in the same fashion except just upside down. So tuck it in and then add the next one on just like that. So just put it under and then you can probably figure out the rest. You just sort of do the little maneuver under the tiny guy and then pull it over that top corner. Um, so now not all of you have 40 strings. So if you don't have 40 strings, whoops. If you don't have 40 strings, then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna add two. And you do need 20 strings. If you have less than 20, it's not gonna work at all. So I'll be doing the 20 for this video, but you can strengthen it with more alternating strings afterwards. So what you do if you have 20 strings, you add two tiles on instead of one. I already removed the string. So you add two tiles on instead of one. And then what you do is you start with every other um, tile. So I started with this tile for the first set of strings. Now I'm starting with this tile for the next set of strings. So I would highly recommend that you do tile all of the, uh, you do string all the tiles. So for, um, for the 20 string people, you always start in the top corner. But for the, uh, for the 40 string people, you alternate bottom corner, top corner, or sorry, my bad, top corner, bottom corner, top corner, bottom corner. Um, but if you have 20, you just always do the top on alternating tiles. And of course you have to flip it over and do the same thing on the opposite side. So here we go, adding a tile, whoops. It does require a good bit of dexterity. So add the string. Now, I was just making sure I'd squared up my panels on the inside. Now go under. I'll demonstrate a couple more of these. And then I'll skip to the halfway point. Oops, okay, my tile's falling apart here. Just make sure all your tiles are square or else it won't look very good. Like squared off as in they are aligned with themselves. Tuck it under the tile. Also make sure not to tuck it inside the tile. That can happen occasionally. That's not good. It's pretty easy to fix, but it will not turn in certain ways. That's again, another reason you need to do the mobility tests. So now take this and weave it into the bottom. Just like that. Again, no mobility tests yet. 
you want to flip it over, then string the bottom, then do the mobility tests and peel off the stickers or the uh, tape on the way. So grab another string and do the same thing from the top left. That can happen, be careful, watch out for uh, pieces coming apart just like that. Just try and catch them before they can actually like fall off. It's actually a lot easier to string with each string because you've only got one extra tile hanging off to, to worry about. And that's a whole lot easier than having to. I'm just doing this for the sake of speed. If I wanted to, I could add the extras at the end, but I actually don't have the strings. I will buy some more though. It's much looser and much easier to break if you uh, only use half the strings. Okay, so here we go, tucking it under. Great. Okay, so now we have five pieces strong. So mobility test, turns down, turns up. So we're good. All right, so I'm gonna keep stringing and I'll catch back up with you guys when I get through the first row. All right, so I have finished my uh, first nine panels. So now it's just time to begin with the second row. So in order to start the second row, first of all, I'm just gonna fold this over because we don't really need to worry about it uh, just to save some desk room. So um, next we attach this piece here and what we start to do is we take this and we flip it around like this. So originally the side that's touching the next piece over becomes the side that faces outwards this direction. So we flip it around and it should sort of like arc out again. So um, square your pieces and then just continue to string. So since I'm doing the 20 pattern, um, I'm gonna start with this one and go like this and string these together or whoops go like that and string those together okay so now that i've added these two i'm just going to continue in the same fashion i'm going to take this one rotate it around like this so it connects with the other and the same for the next and we continue to string okay so i've finished the entire magic stringing it except for the last piece so um, what we do to get the last piece done, uh, again, differs depending on how many strings you have. So what we do, first of all, regardless of how many strings we have, open up the entire magic. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda lay it out on top of itself. So I've just essentially taken the entire straight thing and just folded it over on the end. You don't have to necessarily do this at certain some certain place just as long as you give yourself a bit of room on either end so you're going to do the same thing with the other side so now we fold it over and we would put our piece in the middle there but what we can do is we can uh, fold these both down so then we can insert that piece in just attach it in the way that it's supposed to go um, and then we would string that up but as you probably noticed along the entire way of doing that we've had our um, little arches sort of facing downwards. So what we need to do is we need to flip this upside down in order for our current stringing pattern to keep working. Or actually, I might be wrong on that. You might be able to do it with it uh, upside down, but just uh, flip it like this just to be safe. So stick it in there and then grab your string and put it in the next tile over. Um, so this string will lapse between the tile to the left of the missing tile, the missing tile, and the one to the right. So now it will be a little bit different to try and get the, uh, the string under with all the other tiles in the way. Hold on, let me just square my tile. Paper's sticking out a little bit. Okay, so with all the other tiles in the way, it might be a little bit more difficult on this one, but it shouldn't be too hard. So just, um, Sort of apply the same tiling pattern as we have so far, or sorry, the same stringing pattern. So I'm just, I've got these two strings holding down like this, or sort of 
I'm sorry, I'm holding them down like this. So I'm just gonna place the tile on top in order to sort of start my little flip flop. And then I place the, uh, the string under. And now it's up this way. Then I do the same thing, just take this tile and drop it under that string and then uh, put the put the string under the uh, under the corner and then continue down and then grab my paper clip get the string and now I can just wedge it into that corner a little bit tougher on this one not too bad there it goes. So, uh, yeah, it's all the way in. Okay, so obviously it looks like a completed Master Magic, but of course we need a second string for on the back side. So we're going to just flip that over like that. I'll peel my, peel my sticker off. And now that it's upside down, we can go ahead and put the last string on. Okay, so first of all, just identify which piece is the missing one. It should have one uh, missing string part on either side. So this is my missing piece. Now we're gonna string these three together, again with the same string pattern as we've been doing so far. So, lay it under. Put it behind the corner put it under and pull them this way and then we grab our paper clip and here it goes final string Put it in like that. There you go. Now, um, if you're doing the two string pattern, then of course, this was my missing uh, tile. Um, what you would need to do is you would need to complete these three, then these three, then these three. But of course, I skipped two of these by doing, I, I skipped the strings that traverse these and these by doing the pattern that only does half the strings. So I did these three, but otherwise you're going to need to do these three, these three, these three. And the same on the back. Tile these three, these three, these three, if you've got all 40 strings. Okay, so now our Super Master Magic is completely finished. So first of all, we're going to need to get it back into the solved position. So um, I'm just doing this by intuition, by the way. I don't have this like prepared or anything. But um... We're going to take this and now we want to fold it over like so until you see this um, this last piece of red, like this crease in between the two colors of arches right there. We need to have that on the very end. So it's between these two, uh, these two tiles like that. And then when we open it, now it's completely finished. So there we go, all 20 tiles. So I just wanted to say congratulations on getting this far in the tutorial. I know it takes a lot of patience and effort to get this done. It can be very easy to mess up. So if you've gotten this far, uh, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, so it looked like it's about time to solve your Ultra Master Magic. So the first step is to just put blue on the top. Then we're gonna fold this down we're gonna fold this in and this in on the end, just like that. Then we're gonna open it down like that. Open that up. Now we fold it like so. So now blue is facing down, but then we flip this around like that. So now blue is facing up. The, the circles are pointing upwards. And we, uh, then we take, we sort of open the, uh, the tiles like this, then we do three rolls to the right, like this. Then we open it up, 
like that. So now you should have three of these little pieces on the bottom, like that. So this is actually a pretty common theme. Before you start doing flip moves, um, in any magic you'll have these pieces like that. And it's always in a different sort of flipped position. If I were to just try and do barrel rolls to get back, um, it would not open. So this is sort of like, that's, what, that's why it took so long to get to this position. We had to do a couple weird moves on, along the way. But uh, in the Super Master Magic, you need to have two yellow pieces here, and in the Master Magic, you need to have one to start off with the flip moves. So that's uh, that's uh, kind of interesting. I think if we had any more magics in the same end pattern, we would have to keep making uh, similar, like we would have to keep adding more and more yellow pieces on the bottom for each uh, extra four tiles we added. So. Um, the next step is to fold the left and right pieces in a way that the, uh, the remaining corners of the rectangle are gray. So uh, then we unfold the top and the bottom. And the reason I, I put it like that instead of just saying fold it into the bottom is because we're going to keep repeating that. So now this time we're going to fold it up because if we fold it down, then the corners are now black. So we fold it up like this. Now we have gray corners, unfold the top and the bottom, now fold it down so we have gray corners, and then unfold the top and the bottom again. And just keep repeating this process, fold in, and open the top and the bottom. And now I have a, uh, my Ultra Master Magic is vertical with respect to me. So now we rotate it counterclockwise, and then flip it over like this. So now what we're going to do is take these four pieces and fold them over like that. Then we sort of fold that like so in this sort of like zigzag tower like that. Then we pick up these pieces like this and sort of hold them like a butterfly. And then we start to turn it like that. Now we open up these two pieces, then we fold all of these down, and you'll see that a good chunk of the puzzle has been solved. So now all we need to do is fix the rest. So we're just going to go ahead and take these four, turn them in the same way. Oops, I did it in the wrong direction. You're gonna turn them like in the other way, like that. So now they should be facing outwards in this big W. And the last step is to do, sorry, flip it over. Then we fold these in, then out, then over. And then we make these last two flaps and then fold them outwards. And we, when we flip it over, it's solved. All right, so if you've made it correctly, you should see all the ring patterns done. Uh, if you haven't, you might have one um, one ring twisted or something like that. So uh, sorry if you made a mistake, but that's the solve position. Okay, so now we're going to unsolve it. So first of all, we will unflip it like that. Then we'll do these moves to turn those back down. So just do that in the exact same backwards way as you did before. So now we need to flip it over one more time. Okay, so first we'll solve, we'll unsolve this rather. So um, pick these up in the sort of butterfly way that we did before, then turn them around clockwise and open it. Okay, so it looks to be much easier if you fold this in beforehand. So uh, you fold that in, then you sort of lift these up like this and then start turning and you'll see this will sort of catch on itself kind of like that and then you'll it'll make this cross like that and then you finish the turn and then open it up then from there we can go ahead and turn it over now we have to unflip the flipping moves so whoops we need gray on the corners as we did at the beginning just then flip those over, then keep making gray corners, just like that. Um, and then flip the top and bottom, and just keep going.
just like that. Now we're back to this place. So we need to uh, fold this over. Whoops, fold it over the other way. Now undo three barrel rolls. Oops. Now we can't do that. So now we've got this uh, sort of opposite position like that. Now what we need to do is fold the bottom under, then flip the outer two knots or notches in so like that. And same on the other side. Just go from there to there. Oops. From there to there. Like that. And then open it up. Open the flaps and flip it over and you'll have your Ultra Master Magic back as it was. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This video took me uh, about six to ten times the amount of time that it takes to make a normal one of my videos. Um, it's currently three o'clock in the morning. I wanted to get it done tonight, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, this is the second day working on it. Uh, the first day I spent mainly just making the puzzle, but now I've been editing for the past uh, three or four hours. The puzzle alone took me about uh, three or four hours as well. So this is a sort of a monster of a project. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Uh, I hate chilling for likes, especially this much, but uh, I put a lot of effort into this video. So if you can like it, that would be greatly appreciated here, especially. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you are still watching, I doubt that many people are, but if you watched this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Cube Talk, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.